So last time we spoke about equipment. Now we're gonna talk about person, body, mindset, stance. Some real basic stuff. Go for go. where do you start? Okay, try and keep it really, really basic. So we're gonna be shooting a pair of crossing targets over the top of these trees. We've got one batu, one midi. Um, fairly straightforward crossing birds, nothing scary. It's the sort of thing you'd see on most club rounds, I would say. Both right to left. First thing is gonna be, obviously I'm a left-hander, so I'm gonna try and do this Thanks, mate. opposite way around to make it sensible for you. Always set your feet up for the back end of the shot. So decide where you're gonna be killing the targets, which in this instance is up over that gap in the trees. Mm -hmm. So that's the most important part of your shot. You need to be most comfortable and relaxed at this point. The mistake a lot of people make is when they come into the stand, they address the traps where they first see the bird. And then as they start coming into the kill point, they either lock up and slow the gun and miss behind, or they'll start rolling your shoulder and pull off line. Okay, so it's really important when you come in, you set your feet up for the back end of the shot. So where you're gonna kill the bird and where you're gonna finish up. Okay. Can I give you your gun and we can just look at your foot position? Yeah, sure. In a left-handed way. I would have to do it left-handed, yeah. It fascinates me how much gap people think or where they think their toe should point. I, I don't think there's a hard and fast rule or, or uh, is Again, there? I really think this is something that you've, you've got to let people have a bit of flexibility on because we're all put together different. You've got people who've got different width hips, um, people who've got less flexibility, more flexibility. The key thing for me is if that's where you're killing the bird, you need to be comfortable and balanced at that point. So for me, I've got feet about shoulders width apart, give or take. Some people will go slightly wider, some people will go slightly narrower. I'm able to comfortably reach, before anyone moans, empty gun. Um, I'm able to comfortably reach where I want to shoot the bird without. So for example, if I did what I said earlier on and address the, the pickup point, as I come into the kill point, I'm locking up here. So I'm either going to stop or have to roll a shoulder, which is going to cause a problem. It's quite so, a neutral position, actually, where you're Yeah, it's, it's comfortable. It's what you do most of the day, standing, you know. That's that's where you're facing. It doesn't want to be overly wide or incredibly narrow because you're then starting to lose balance. Um, just go for a sensible width, comfort, a little bit of weight over that your That might change foot. for targets or not really? Oh uh, Yeah, so if you start getting into shooting stuff underneath your feet, you're going to start changing your weight distribution a little bit and say for high driven, you'll start shifting some weight onto your back foot. But again, at the minute, keep for it the basic. basic stuff, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just be bit comfortable. More bit more weight on your front foot than the back foot. Get comfortable where you're killing the bird. Shoot some targets. That's a good point. So that's going to be your starting point. You set up where you want to kill the bird. You're then going to wind back to your predetermined hole point. This is something we'll talk about on, a, on another video. But for example, we're gonna say over the top of that tree, we're then gonna shift the eyes back to where we first see the target, which is a visual pickup point. Watch the bird come into the barrel, meet it and get near it. You don't have to worry about being overly precise. You must point at, you must be front edge, you must be back edge. Start near it and move away. Uh, you once said when on the, on the challenge said, Wise to have some sort of connection. That's yeah. very true. Some yeah. sort of connection. Some sort of connection. Point, and, it just needs my, to be something. My view is you can connect from the front, you can connect from the target, you can connect from the back. It's a it's a brief point in time where you're moving with yeah. the target and then you decide to pull away. So that's that's the basics of how I would set up there. Gun mount? As in gun up, gun down? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, just, yeah. That's yeah, gun up, gun down. If it's English sporting, what you're comfortable with. Okay. So for me, I shoot sporting much more gun up than gun down. Um, I've always historically been a gun up shooter, so I will bias myself towards that. There are instances where I'll shoot gun down if I've got a long wait. So if there's a long crow target coming in and I want to sort of have the gun out of my face. Hours on end. Yeah, wait, see the target, engage it on the way up and then take it. Game shooters tend to shoot more gun down. So again, it's trying to build up an awareness of what you as a shooter feel comfortable with. There's going to be hard and fast rules where it makes absolutely no sense. So for example, there's a stand around there which got a really fast going away trap bird. I would never teach anyone to shoot that gun down because be it's, sat on it's it putting you at a massive disadvantage. So don't do it. There's going to be plenty of birds where I could say to you, are you more comfortable shooting this gun up and gun down? We can start with that as a starting point, And then if it looks like it's causing an issue, we can change it. There's but no right or wrong ways. There's no there's hard your, rules. There's your right way and there's your wrong way. And this is a, as a, from a coaching perspective and understanding a shooter, it's finding out what works for a person. So you might find that you shoot a target particularly well gun up. I might find I shoot it well gone down. The key thing is, I know what works for me, you learn what works for you. Simple. At what point do you generally recommend people get gun fits? Does it matter too much at this yeah. stage? Imagine this is the second time I've ever held a gun. If it's the second time you've ever held a gun, in reality, a super, super basic gun fit. As Lengthy. in, is, is the length about right? 
can you see high enough over the gun? I'd always sooner see someone with a higher comb than a lower comb because they get to see more of what's happening. A lower comb can cause various other problems. Um, but the, the reality is, second time or third time you've picked up a gun, you're going to be so inconsistent with what you're doing, it's impossible for somebody to fit a gun to you. Yeah. So if you're, for example, you, you're not an out of the box kind of guy. The second time you have a gun. But a few spacers. You could say, yes, yeah, stick, stick probably an inch on the back of any bog standard club That's gun. That's gonna make your life a little bit yeah, better, less worse. Probably a if little you're left-handed, a left-handed gun will make your yeah, life better um, than worse. Probably a little bit of a, a comb raise if you use, you've got quite a long neck and by the time you come into the gun, you're gonna be dropping your head into it. That will be as far as it needs to be. You're not gonna get millimeter precision when you start doing gun fits for people. And in reality, six months in, is going to be similar it will be better but there's going to be a lot of moving parts back here again get it close and then work on you've Actually, seen i mean from just a, a really boring stupid thing you pick my gun up which is left-handed wrong length left -handed. um wrong height everything for you you can still shoot it i'm not advising that people shoot ill-fitting guns obviously but in reality the like the cartridge thing we did the biggest problem usually with people missing targets is their inability to shoot the bird it's not the kit that they've got so yeah, gun fit, it doesn't want to be hurting you. So if you're getting bruised up, you're getting kicked, that's a problem. Um, if it's too low in the comb, that's a problem. I'd always sooner set somebody with a higher gun than a lower gun. To start with, get it close and learn to shoot. That's the, that's the thing. Further down the line, yeah, there's a lot more weight needs to be put on, on gun fit, but yeah, how far do you want to go with it? I say, if you, you, you can break some from the hip, so gun fit doesn't matter quite so much, correct? Yeah, as, as you keep mentioning. You yeah, keep mentioning it because yeah. it's desperately impressive <laughs> that you can do it. Right, do you want to shoot a few? Uh, yeah, I have one more question. Sure. Sight picture. Yeah, as in what, what you, you talk see. about height of comb, aka yep. bringing your face up and seeing more rib, seeing yep. more gun, seeing more sight picture. Yep. Is that your general go to? Is yeah, I, I, I have a personally a pathological hatred of flat guns. I, I really dislike people seeing no rib because I think it cuts out a lot of vision. Um, it, is it wrong? No. It, it's wrong for me and I wouldn't choose to set people up with it but there's plenty of people who shoot a flat shooting gun and shoot it very well but generally speaking I think seeing more rib enables you to have better vision on the target more awareness around the gun and I think it's actually more natural to shoot personally but you know you'll get just as many people telling me I'm wrong as I'm sure you'll see on this in video the in comments. the comments section um, see you there but uh, yeah yeah I mean find out what works for you you've seen how high that is yeah, well, I, that versus the gun that you saw me last time is 15 mil higher. Yeah. For the very purpose of I wanted to see more stuff. Yeah, and you've found that it doesn't magically make it shoot higher as such. You know, it doesn't print the pattern as, seemingly that much higher. As long as you're not using it's the end a, of your muzzle as a reference. Exactly. It's more of a pointing aid as opposed to a, a, a rifle aiming tool, if that You makes also sense. have no beads on your gun. Yeah, so I have no beads on these, and that's because I see so much rib. I use the rib itself as a reference point. So when it comes down to people saying, oh, you never see the gun, I'm afraid that's physically impossible because it's 32 inches of metal that's stuck in front of your face you are going to see it um i don't use a bead purely because i see so much rib i will use the rib itself as a pointing and a referencing aid so that's my sight picture based on the target is going to be referenced the rib as opposed to just a bead but, but that suits don't, your style of suits shooting. my style um it's all how i've always done it um don't confuse the idea of not having a bead with not knowing where the gun is because that's two very different things and that's an argument we can cross off later when we've got a bit more time Sounds good to me. Cool. Do you want to shoot a few? Uh, oh, can you shoot a few first? I could try. Oh, you can try. As a report pair. Yeah, okay. So if we you, like. look at the birds. You always see a pair? Yeah, absolutely. You'll always. Yeah, yeah because you're, you, you're not trying to prove to yourself how reactionary you can be. At the end of the day, your job here is to try and break eight targets, 10 targets, whatever it is in a row. If you've got the advantage of being able to see a pair of targets, see a pair of targets. Because otherwise, your first pair is going to be a bit of a range finder. Yeah. And it's potentially over... No, 16, uh, sorry, 13 stands, so 26 targets that Lost. you've not given 100% to, yeah. you're going to get beaten by the guy who does, so don't make it uh, harder. Even when you're training, you'll see a pair? Yeah. And that's just to read the line? It's to, get, to go through your pre-shot routine, which is you know, probably a bit in-depth for this kind of yeah, a video. It but matter, yeah. Yeah, We've done another video on that. Yeah, we can do another one. No, um, we have done. Of course, how could I forget? How, how, um, but yeah, good. I would say it's coming in your, your practicing to get better at competing, or I would say you're practicing to get better at competing, if so practice how you would compete, yeah. Um, that's, that's my view on it. Should okay. we have a look at them? Let's look. So first target is a right to left batu, pull. So I'm looking at that target and thinking my kill zone is gonna be at the back of that tree. So 
And you're looking for that easy zone, yeah? That's where, to me, it looks most achievable. So that's where I'm going to base my shot, OK? So I'm going to get nice and comfortable for that point. It's a crossing target. My whole point's going to come about two thirds of the way back, which is here. I'm going to let my eyes drift off to the right, watch it near the barrel, move away, bang. And then I'm going to come for the second target. So send the second. Similar line, it's a midi. So yeah. essentially, that's going to be the same setup for me. The only thing that's going to be different is the sight picture on the second bird is going to be smaller than the first because it's a little bit closer and it's slowed up a bit more. Look how the midi, in dies. reality, yeah. is probably a third less distance. Yeah. And the other one's and landing another 25 yards away. The Batu, away. because it's thinner, it cuts through the air yeah. and it carries its speed better, whereas the, the midi is slowing up. So this is why it's important to look at the board and understand that it's a midi, understand it's a Batu, so yeah, you can and that's, understand it's And that's why part. you see your first pair. So you can get all of the out of the way, yeah. rather than shooting the first one and going, oh, that wasn't what oh, I shit, thought. That was a midi, yeah. yeah. I didn't need to give it 500. Too late, yep. Yeah. Okay. I'll do a report pair yeah. for you. I'll try and talk you through it roughly, just to give you an idea whether that works or not, we'll find out. So, comfort zone setting up for the, for this area here at the back of the stand. Yep. Whole point for me is coming back to the start of this tree. Eyes are going to go off to the right. I'm going to watch the bird near the gun and move away. But your face is stuck to the gun in the same mounting fashion. I've got what I call a bit of a cheat mount at the moment. I'm locked into the shoulder, my head's off the gun. As I see the target, I'm going to come down into the stock Just and move through the bird. Mm. Yep, so it's not full gun down, which gives you better vision, but it will put me under a little bit of time pressure. It's not full gun up, which Saved me a bit of time, but it would be a little bit rigid. It's kind of a halfway house. So, so what was it? There's, there's not really anything rigid here. You can do what makes you comfortable, as much or as little as out the shoulder, providing it works as long as it the feels most comfortable and you can to break it. the targets. Yeah, that's all, that's all you're interested in. It's building up your understanding of your game, your shooting, what works best for you under what circumstances. Comfortable at the back of the shot, winding back to the hold point, head just off the stock, looking to the right, pull, moving away. <laughs> back. When people first start out, mm -hmm. should they be looking to go straight into the plan stage that you've just done? Really nice, very calculated. Or is it better to let them run, get in and just shoot it with some instinct and some natural ability? Um, so that's a, a difficult question in itself because that's, that's quite a big, there's quite a lot of ifs and buts there. Um, depending on how far on somebody is, that I'm quite anti people just going in and pulling the trigger because that's what people, most people tend to do and it's not particularly useful. I'd sooner people come in if they're starting, for example, don't do that as a report pair, shoot it as single targets, but understand the shot on each bird and try and refine the move on target one until you've got that right. Then get your set up for target two, run through that, get it right. If you feel comfortable that you can put them together as a pair then by all means, but I'd sooner people go a little bit more on quality rather than quantity and just Interesting. trying to shoot on instinct. There's a lot of targets where it does work, but there's also a lot of targets where it doesn't. Um, and again, you don't learn anything during the process. Like that's going to be, a, that's gonna be another fight in the comments section. I can, I can see it coming, but the, the whole analogy of people chucking out that it's like catching a ball, it's very little like catching a ball. Some of the shots are in that you just look at the target and your hands do the work, but there's a lot more targets that that doesn't work for. I presume it depends on the final outcome people want, how they approach these. If Listen, they want to be a good sporting shooter, this is the way to do it. Look, if you if you want to go out with your mates on a Sunday and shoot more targets, then there's some things you could do from a from a coaching perspective, like quick fixes for people. Like you mean have some coaching? Yeah, have yeah, some coaching. That, that's possibly, a good start. Or yeah, I mean just you know go out and blast away, and you will get better at certain stuff. You'll probably build in bad habits to an extent as well, but not everyone's looking to do England selection shoot, um, England selection shoots, majors. World Championships, a lot of people are just saying, you know what, my mates shoot in the 60s and I'm shooting in the 50s and I'd like to shoot another 10 or 12 targets more so I can feel I can keep it up with them. Let's go find the easy wins. That's fine. And the stuff that you're going to do with somebody like that is going to be a lot less intensive than something you're going to do with someone who's you know, fighting for a World Championship place. So again, the whole what to work on, it depends entirely on the person and their objectives. Everyone's different. That's yeah, exactly. Work out, work out what works for you. That is your, your objective as a, either a coach or a shooter is to work out where your game naturally works and where it doesn't, and on the bits it doesn't work on, find a way that Learn does. Learn something new. Yeah. Very good.